Fed Day, everybody. This is uh, the event that a lot of people are looking for, although I think a lot of people have begun to react to it or trade in front of it, anticipating what most people think is going to be the outcome today. So looking for the hike, looking for a double statement, maybe a pause. Uh, I don't know if it's going to come in the statement or Powell has a presser, but the market's trading like that's going to be the outcome of today. So we'll see uh, Euro pushing up. Uh, looking for dovish comments. Now, remember last week in the Dixie when Greg was here, I don't know if he's going to be here today, but his line in the sand for the beginning of a dollar correction is 96.40 right here under these lows. So we're not that far away from them. We'll see what happens. Uh, perhaps we just get a failing rally back to 720 on the Fed hike. I really have no idea how to play it. Uh, the market's acting like this was just a stop hunt, false breakout, heading lower. So um, I would guess, and that's all it is right now, that uh, probably the right thing to do is if the dollar rallies back halfway, 61.8 of this decline is to fade it up here, wrong over the high. It's just a guess. Don't even know if I'm going to do it, but that's what I'm thinking. So. Um, you would think with the dollar weaker and gold's had a great run. I just want to caution uh, people, even though we could still go to 1260, 1280, uh, we are showing some divergences in the gold here. Okay, so if you look at the one hour, uh, this looks pretty much like a one, two, three diverging up here, heading lower, uh, now being supported here. Also, uh, if you're long silver, uh, back under 1460 uh, is your first warning sign, but definitely under 1440, we do this, then we're headed back towards the low. So otherwise, you know, the alternate case is gold goes to 1260 to 1280, and silver makes a move towards 1530, 1550. And I think we'll get the outcome. So here you are again with this moving averages on the four hour, the 50 and the 200 are lines in the sand. Your first sign that there's something wrong with the silver. Well, really, there's already a, a sign. Gold's been making progressively higher highs, right? Okay, and silver has not. So uh, this could also set up uh, a great opportunity as uh, silver's underperforming to see uh, if it extends back into Steve Volge's channel of the gold silver ratio and not take out the high and put in a failing rally on that chart to uh, be long silver and short gold on the ratio. So, uh, one more good break in silver, I think, could set up that opportunity. Uh, it looks vulnerable to me. So despite uh, the Fed most likely coming out with a double statement, I'd say what uh, would surprise the market would be a uh, rate height without dovish language. Uh, and we'll see how disappointed uh, the stock market and stock indexes will be. I mean, they're pricing it in thinking it's going to happen. We're starting to get a little divergence down here. Maybe we wash one more time before we get a recovery. We'll see. I don't know what to do here. Uh, yesterday, uh, there was some talk that there was divergence on the daily. Let's see if that held up. Yeah, we're still, you know, did not make a new low and held above 30 so the divergence is still intact from prior lows here so yesterday uh we uh did have an inside day well no we took out the previous day's lows by a little bit so we'll see if this could be the place that we get a rally to me this looks uh pretty important this area 26 you know you can almost have a rectangle you have the big break and then you have you know, a rectangle straight line here, 2605, and then kind of a straight line here at 2813. 
So this is like a 200 handle range and classic technicians would say uh, we could get 200, we should get 200 from this formation uh, as long as we're not back above the breakdown. So 2603 looks like a decent pivot. I know it's 50 handles away, but the way these markets move, uh, that's a day, a day's worth of action. Uh, I also want to point out, I thought we'd have one more low under the big round number in Bitcoin, and we're getting a hell of a rally, right? So I was looking for... Uh, I hope you heard me the other day. Uh, you didn't answer back, but you came back as I was still talking about it. I said, uh, you know, grab it, sir, if you're not sitting, because I would be buying Bitcoin here. But I don't oh. know if you really heard me because you never answered. Did you do it? No, because I don't have an account. Otherwise, I would have done it. But I, okay. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be bothered be by uh, if if I had an account, I would back, actually have done it because right. we had a very nice descending descending wedge. Right. And we did stop at a very nice horizontal support area. So I told that, you know, all kidding aside, and you know what my feelings are for cryptocurrencies, you know, yeah. as as a long term investment or whatever. But that doesn't mean that you cannot benefit, you know, uh, yeah. in the short term from a bounce because nothing moves in a straight line. So All right, I said well, that, I have a solution for you. Good call. I'm sorry I didn't hear it. I was looking for a buy. I thought that we would uh, wash one more time towards 2,800. But there is a, an instrument, Steve, where you don't have to have an account. And it's a trust. It's GBTC. So, uh, you know, there are ways to play um, Bitcoin without have, uh, without you know, having a, an account at one of these fraudulent exchanges. So yeah, anyway, because that, I that mean, I don't, I don't trust those exchanges either. And, me too. You know, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't give them my personal data, and, you know. Yeah, no and, and, uh, and, you know, a lot of people that actually are, you know, uh, you know, uh, adopters and trade it, uh, they never leave uh, balances in there. A lot of people have wallets. And I also heard... Uh, from one of my eagles that uh, the trading expenses from some of these exchanges, you know, you could end up being charged five, 10% out. You know, there's not like just a spread and that's all you pay. So, uh, you know, trade what you know, you know, and there's enough out there to, you know, uh, you know, uh, exploit or be exploited by without, you know, uh, delving into new territory, but you know, I am, um, I am interested in learning. Okay, so you know, sometimes uh, knowledge changes your opinion of something, and yeah, yeah one heck of a rally. Depends, 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 coach, on what kind of a trader you are, because you said trade what you know, and yes, I do know economics, so yeah, I do have yeah. a comprehensive macro view of the economy as well, but I consider myself. A technical trader so right. i really don't care what the chart says you know what i mean and i yeah, consider I myself a technical trader because as i've said many many times i use my macro view only to help me um take decisions yeah. about which side of the market i should be pressing yeah. more or it, it how, how, much long, how much longer to hold the position but you know the decisions of where i would enter a market um or you know to define my risk reward or to define if something looks like a good opportunity opportunity i i almost exclusively take uh, based on uh, technicals and technically yeah. speaking bitcoin bitcoin looked great for a rebound that's why i said that day unfortunately you weren't here because you you didn't answer to me i said coach are you here if you are grab a chair but you never answered so oh, I guess well, maybe maybe it was there. my commodity kidneys uh it, any, might, any, it might have been my but people on the webinar up. remember it. Everyone, and raise I, your I, hand. Raise your hand. I, I had to explain that I wasn't kidding because I know many know that you know I'm not a fan yeah. <laughs> of of cryptos. Yeah. But I I had to explain that I wasn't kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I I agree with Steve. And this is for everyone listening to us that uh, really a chart is a chart is a chart. I don't care what the title is either. Like Steve, it could be IBM, it could be cattle. It could be Euro. Um, you trade it the same way. The only difference is leverage and beta. So it's not the instrument. Uh, it's who's driving the car. 
that matter. By, so, and by the way, purely technical traders would tell you that anyhow fundamentals don't matter uh, for one sense and one sense only. Fama would agree with that as well with his efficient market hypothesis, because theoretically speaking, um, any uh, fundamental thesis is also baked in the price, right, yeah. coach? So do you think that uh, the you know the the prices that we're seeing right now have baked in a dovish hike? I think that the most hokey scenario that we can get today is a dovish hike. That's the I'm, most I'm hawkish. Very, I'm, I'm very adamant about it. The most hokey scenario you can expect today is a dovish hike. Okay. Anything anything more hokey than what I just described would come as a huge, huge surprise to me, and I very rarely. Uh, you know, I'm that wrong. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't yeah. say it with so much confidence. Um, uh, any chance and, and for you know no? Do you think there could the, be a no hike? In my opinion, the chances of a no hike is higher than the market currently considers. Stelio, uh, what is the um, chance? Uh, what is the market pricing in as a chance of a no hike uh, for uh, the hours to follow? Good morning, oh, Sam. Hey, hello. Morning. I love you, buddy. Love you too, coach. <laughs> you, All Steve, right. not, not so much for Steve. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, I know, I know. The interrupter. Well, Steve, we're, you and I have that in common, being Geminis, you know, we uh, interrupt. <laughs> and we're afraid the other guy will pop out in us and, you know, cut us off. So we get it out there. <laughs> Go ahead, um, Stel. So today, I think we're pricing roughly 65, 70% chance of a hike, which, ah, you know. So it's. It's much slower than I expected. So yeah, I I would agree with that. Sorry, I thought I thought it, we were pricing much. It was like 85% a week yeah, ago. Okay. Yeah, so, because with 85% I, I disagree. Now with 60 60%, I, I agree. I, I put it somewhere there. Like, you know, two out of three. Yeah, like the interesting the interesting part is what's priced after that. We were talking about this yesterday on the, on this webinar. Or or mm -hmm. was it on the chat room? I can't remember. But mm -hmm. we have 14 basis points for next year. So which is half a high. Really yeah. And then half for the year high. after and the year after that, it goes negative. So, it goes negative. yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it might be fair. Actually, I think it's quite fair, but no, I, I think it isn't fair. just, for, just yeah, for today. I, I gave you my personal prediction. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero yeah. negative rates in a, in a year from now. Yeah. Uh, no, so, I, you I, know, I, Steve, all, everything I'm reading on the internet is really painting uh, a very, uh, uh, negative, a uh, scary kind of picture of uh, yeah. what could happen here. And you know, I tweeted out, and uh, this will, you know, you you may want to read it, Stell. Coach, I'm not I'm not saying it to um, I know. out my my own horn, but you know that I've been saying the exact same things for right. more than six months, right? Yeah. I was yeah. I was saying that I believe that the recession was due to come. Uh, Trumps. Um, well, Prechter has been saying it longer. Prechter has yeah, okay. been saying it for 20 years. So, <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't uh, count. Right. I know. Because I, I, even a broken clock is, is right uh, twice. But, right? It, it, uh, see, I, I told you so. I'm <laughs> I'm, I know you're broke now from trying to short the market for 20 years, but see, <laughs> I was right. And, yeah. and you know, uh, Stel, I, 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 I want to yeah. send you an article because you worked and lived in the UK. And yeah. what's happening in the UK on high street on retail, and it's yeah. even happening online. Um, yeah. the, the, this is the worst Christmas in so many years. And I was taught early in my career, like to follow the BOE and what happens uh, in the UK usually leads what happens in the US. And it's a nightmare uh, for these retailers. And online retailing is also yeah, yeah. suffering in the UK. Did you hear about ASOS, A A A S O S, yeah. or however you say it? I mean, they yeah. had a huge miss, and they're guiding much lower. And yeah, it doesn't look doesn't look great. Um, but okay. uh, I actually I actually have to agree with um, with Steve with his his forecast. I mean, it sounds extreme, but if you look at the the numbers coming coming out of the US, I had I, I was having actually a talk with one of my friends who was a financial advisor this morning. And he was saying, you know, why are you so bearish on the U.S. and the, the economy and all that? Look, everything's fine. You know, GDP is great and unemployment. And I said, look, if you look at the the, um, uh, the leading indicators, they're all turning. They've all turned. Uh, like PMIs. Yeah. Yeah. Not even GDP. 
if you extract from third quarter GDP inventory yes, building, yes, yes. it was, it, it, I mean, if we had net zero change in inventory building in Q3, we would have had a 1.2% growth. Yeah. So I, every, everything in excess of 1.2% was inventory building, nothing else. I agree. I agree. And I told him that as well. And I also said, you know, he said, oh, unemployment is, um, is really great and all that. So I said, look at the details. It's really not what you want to be seeing from an economy which is supposed to be really, you know, growing and doing well. And, and as I said before, all the leading indicators, PMIs, housing, it's all turning and it's, you know, it's not inspiring confidence, let's put it this way. But having said that, I think that for today, given what the market's pricing, um, you know, I, I don't think they're not going to hike. I mean, I, th I think they're going to hike. This is it's very rare for the the Fed or any of the major Still, central banks. Since, yeah. since Blake is not today yet, uh, instead of us discussing that, I want to do the following. I know it's out of the ordinary. Yeah. We haven't done it before, uh, but it, it it lasts like seven minutes, and I believe that everybody should hear that. I I found that out yesterday actually. Um, Coach, do you want to explain everybody who Jeffrey Gundla is? In case you don't know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a very well-known uh, fund manager, uh, well-known for his uh, work in bonds. and uh, Exactly. He has been actually named yeah. the king of bonds by barons, and he's like the, in the list of 50 more influential uh, people from Bloomberg, etc. You get the point. He's a very, yeah. very, he very replaced, well. He replaced Bill Gross as the new Bond King. Exactly. Long live the king. Exactly, exactly. So we're not talking about like a, a, a super bearish guy or whoever. We're talking about everybody knows, first of all, in the market that credit always knows more. There's no disagreement there, Coach, right? Ray, da credit Ray Dalio, I saw part of an interview with him, and he's more famous than Gundlich. And he yeah. said his best economist that he's used at every cycle is inside the market, is his economist. And he was making the point about groups that, you know, were leading cyclical-type companies that are down 30, you know, uh, 35 percent, rather than the S and P just being down 11. Okay, so, I want uh, us. I w I've uploaded a video, and I want us to hear. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to hear it. I think I think we will, coach, because I uploaded it on the GoToMeeting uh, oh, okay. platform. They give you that ability. Cool. So I want to. I want you to confirm that we can hear it. I, I I will only show a small part. That was in a one-hour interview. I want to show only a very small part. I remind you that this is not like a. Tim Foyle cut, um, hat type of guy. He's not like a, um, um, you know, a perma bear, a perma bull or whatever. He's a guy that trades tens, more than 10 billion uh, worth of bonds, right? And credit always knows best. So I think it's really, really worth it before we go to the charts since Blake is away today. We're going to go to the charts. We're going to do what we usually do. But I really believe we should watch these. Okay. Uh, this can, little... I ask him, can I ask him questions? The Unfortunately, the no. going. <laughs> so, um, so let me know.
Um, some say they have no sound, uh, but I can confirm that I have sound on a tablet that we're monitoring and on Stelios's MacBook. Coach, do you have sound? What, what, Steve? Okay, a lot say that the sound is okay. It's good. Okay, a lot say that they have sound. Some don't have sound. Yes. Perhaps they have an older version. I could hear them. Okay, so those of you that don't have sound, I'm going to give a recap afterwards. Uh, just bear with us for five minutes and I'm going to give a recap. Ah, some say click on the screen to get the audio. So try, try clicking on the screen to get the audio. Okay, I'm going to put the link as well in. And now comes the good part.
Okay. So, coach, what do you think? Yeah, you know, um, I, you know, I've read that book, and you know, I've been <laughs> like Jeff worried about this for, you know, twenty years. Uh, that uh, the worst scenario that can happen for us is, is that the, rate, yeah, is the that rate on go what up, said. exactly. Rate, rates go up, not because of economic strength but because we have to do it to finance uh, our debt exactly. and most likely stop outflows from the US dollar. So you could have a weak economy and a liquidity crisis all at the same time. Yeah, the, the first, did you hear that? The first two months of the fiscal year uh, are pointing to a deficit that's now running uh, at the size of 1.62 trillion, and that's without calculating the off-budget items. Yeah. So, as you see, yes, Elio? Why do you think the top 1% are accumulating real assets, like, you know, uh, real estate, cars, fine art, and all that? Why do you think they're doing it? Because, you know, the monetary base is going to explode, and it is exploding. Yep. Exactly. Right. So um, that comes from Gundlach. Let me remind you that this guy actually manages tens of billions of dollars and he is in bonds, right? And we all know that bonds know first, Forex next, and stocks are the last ones to know this. So there may be means... nowhere to hide, you know, uh, what the rich are doing, accumulating tangibles, because some of the things I've read in the past that uh, when rates are going up, and there's a liquidity problem, people will sell the kitchen sink to raise cash, which will include, cla you know, classic cars and art and, and uh, uh, you know, real by estate. The way, sorry to interrupt. I put in the chat for those of you, that, there were a few of you that couldn't hear a uh, voice. Um, I recommend that you hear like the first 14 minutes of the interview. Um, I put the link in so you can listen to it. If you didn't have actually voice, you can listen to it. Um, after the webinar uh, is over, Jason uh, comments says, uh, question with, uh, with the need to sell treasuries to fund the deficit, uh, how can treasuries be attractive if the Fed lowers rates? First of all, the Fed cannot um, lower or increase rates. It can actually, but I mean, they don't dictate the rate, but they can, um, they can influence short-term rates by them uh, buying themselves, like, like monetizing the debt. Okay, uh, so that's the, the whole concept there. But the question is, what is the size of debt monetization that the Fed can do before? Because Gundlach, if you hear the rest of the interview, he then mentions that he thinks that there is a huge uh, serious issue. And if you remember, we've mentioned the exact same thing, that once we come to the point that the Fed will have to um, revert to debt monetization again, and the whole pro process is starting. Once again, um, more uh, you know, more seriously than ever, the um, currency's reserve status is going to be uh, a threat, and that the only thing that holds the dollar at the levels it currently is, given the fact that the U.S. is running huge uh, triple deficits. Um, is the fact that it's the world reserve currency and China and other countries are already uh, taking steps uh, to make sure that sooner or later that's going to be over. So he's extremely, extremely bearish the dollar. Um, later on, if you hear in the interview, he's extremely bearish the dollar. He thinks that the dollar is going a lot lower because simply put, one way or another, there is, you know, there is no alternative uh, to that. Um, either the Fed is going to do it or to, to save the market or the market is going to do it because of what the Fed is doing. So, you know, that's that's the whole point. That's why I've, I've kept saying that my thesis is uh, for a you know, longer term, lower dollar. And, you know, this now you can you had the exact same things I've been saying from the mouth of somebody that actually, you know, trades billions of dollars in the market for a living, uh, you know, for the past 30 years. Um, so um, we had a question. This was the chart I had shown, actually, Coach. Um, the, uh, the question we had a friend before um, asking 
uh, what is the target in Bitcoin. Uh, the usual target when you have a descending wedge is a retracement of the wedge. So I would say that from that point of view, um, 4,600, but since we have the 38 um, uh, percent FIB of that last move lower coming in and coinciding with that high that we had here, I would say that the safest target is like at around 4.4K. Okay, so, and, and that moving uh, average will probably uh, converge to that level as well if it keeps yeah. going, right? At the same time, at the same time, Stelio, look at Ethereum. Ethereum is now just probing finally above this descending uh, channel. So Ethereum also shows that it has the potential of, um, you know, starting a move of its own uh, higher from here. Anyhow, I, I, I still laugh uh, sometimes when I remember when Ethereum was at what 400 or 500, and you said you, at some point you said you know the actual probably ultimate target is something like 70, was it that you said? 75. Like, yeah, oh, my target I, was 75, and oh we actually God. made it to 80. Yeah, yeah we made it to 80. Was, <laughs> yeah, my, my my target was 75, and we made it to 80. <laughs> yeah, and I I knew it sounded preposterous back then, but really that was my, my technical target. Um, anyhow, enough with that. We have the Fed decision today, so the question is, what happens from here? So, simple scenarios, two scenarios. As I said, in my opinion, there are two scenarios. There are no three scenarios. I mean, the third scenario, in my mind, is almost impossible. The third scenario is a, a hike and no dovish rhetoric going along with it. In my opinion, that possibility is like 1%, 2%. So I'm not going to lose much time analyzing that. Uh, I'm going to briefly say that if the, if the Fed hikes and they do not accompany the hike with dovish language, I don't think they're going to be hawkish, but if they abstain from being dovish, which is like the most you know, hawkish scenario I can think of, uh, and I give it a low probability, as I said, I think that stocks are going to suffer greatly. Um, and I think the dollar is going to go bid. Okay. Now, the, uh, statistically speaking, the most probable scenario, that the, the Fed hikes and they guide forward that from this point on, uh, it will all have to do about how the data come uh, from this point on, right? So they hike and in essence, the forward guidance is going to be that anything can happen from here. There are no guarantees. Who knows if we're going to hike again, when we're going to do it. We're going to keep monitoring the data and, you know, depends on what the data tell us. You know we're gonna, uh, you know we're gonna act accordingly because we feel that we're already close to the neutral rate. Okay, so that's the most probable scenario. Now, what happens under this um, scenario? That's the toughest scenario to call. Why? Because we're not sure how much of that is already priced in in the market. So it's not like a slam dunk that if they hike and at the same time um, they they have dovish language, what the dollar so much is gonna do. But in my opinion, if that's what they end up doing, uh, even if we get a, re a relief rally in uh, equities, um, I do believe that um, it's going to be short-lived. Okay. Uh, now, the third case scenario, they don't hike at all. They say that data, you know, we're not going to hike now because um, it seems that the data have shifted quite a lot and, you know, we want to be more careful and it's not that we're under pressure to hike or whatever. Under this scenario, I expect that uh, we're going to have an initial, uh, you know, risk-on scenario. Um, most probably than not, that might actually last a little bit longer. Uh, but I do uh, eventually think that as long as they keep tightening by reducing the balance sheet, and as long as they don't mention anything that has to do with the balance sheet, because I remind you that the Fed is is currently tightening from both sides. What are the what are both sides? One of them is unwinding, unwinding part of the QE, the quantitative easing that they were doing for so many years. Uh, and the second one is uh, they've been hiking rates. Both of them, in essence, are monetary policy tightening, right? Um, just to give you an idea, Gundla also speaks in the same interview, and this is something I've, I've read before, about a study that they made uh, that connects interest rates with quantitative easing. In essence, um, Economists try to figure out what is the connection between, uh, let's say, 100 basis point of a, a hike or a cut in comparison with QE. So, in essence, uh, let's say how many billions of QE 
um, would equate with you know a one percent move in, in in rates one way or another. So they came up with a number like 800 billion or whatever. So you know Gundla is also making the good point, saying that uh, you know uh, by reducing, I mean theoretically speaking, the Fed is supposed to reduce the balance sheet by another 600 billion next year in 2019. Personally, I don't believe they're going to do that. They, I mean, I believe that you know this whole um, reducing the balance sheet um, uh, process is going to uh, stop uh, sooner rather than later and probably get uh, inverted. But uh, if we assume that they go on as planned, they intend to um, uh, reduce the balance sheet by another 600 billion, which more or less is uh, equals to like another uh, 1% of rate hikes. And they've already you know, done some reducing. So um, this was also something worth uh, mentioning from what he said from the part that you uh, didn't see. Um, now, um, back to the scenarios. So um, what happens if they don't hike? And they say that due to data having changed, you know, we want to be more careful, etc. As long as they're not uh, reversing course and they're still reducing the balance sheet as well, I believe that we might have like a bigger reaction, uh, risk being on, um, dollar being sold. But I would still expect that to fail perhaps a little bit later than it would under the second uh, scenario. So uh, just to make it very simple. I would be selling. Uh, I would be selling any rallies in risk, um, and you know, depending on the first reaction that we're going to see from the markets and what we actually get from the Fed, um, I'm going to decide if I'm going to be selling it rather, you know, immediately, or I'm going to give it a few days to run its course. Perhaps the Santa Claus rally, like you know, it's usually the liquid days between Christmas and the New Year, um, and then you know. Uh, at the very first days of the year, might, we might have a good selling opportunity. Regardless, I think that the risks are still tilted to the downside. We've mentioned that multiple times. Um, and I still think that we have a target below us, which is 24.75. Obviously, though, on the other hand, we have seen some divergences. And, you know, today might be a good excuse for the markets to get some kind of a short-term relief. So obviously, selling here in expectation of the Fed is dangerous. I'm not suggesting it. Right now, um, Steve, saying... uh, Steve, did you see the question? You know, based on your uh, good call about buying Bitcoin, where what your targets? Yeah, were? yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you, you were waiting. Okay. I, I already answered that. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Can you tell me? Uh, yes, it's 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 uh, it's back at the uh, beginning Breakdown. of of the uh, wedge. Um, okay. uh, actually, we target a little bit lower because we have the 38.2. I think a safe target would be 4,400. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah my right. pleasure. Um, so, um, wh where do I think that we have resistance uh, in case that we have a risk on uh, outcome from the Fed today? Yeah, definitely, the first area of resistance is going to be 2,600. And after 2,600, it's going to be the retest of this uh, trend line. And above that, it's 26.90. Personally, I believe that the market is going to have a very, very hard time making it above 26.90. So for me, anything that will, let's assume that, you know, some risk on move starts today because, you know, the, the market participants get a relief that, oh, yeah, the Fed is going to have our backs again. So, you know, we can feel more comfortable about buying stocks. Um, I would still be feeling very comfortable uh, selling near 26. Uh, 90. So that doesn't change. Now, of course, you know, we have to see uh, price action, um, uh, you know, uh, unfolding and reassess. Uh, but, you know, if I had to make some speculation in advance, that would be it. Uh, the same thing applies to use the yen, meaning that it's obviously going to react to what's happening today. And not coincidentally, use the yen is holding um, a very key uh, support and line ahead of the Fed. So today it's going to be a make it or break it day for the USD yen um, because I, I think that if today we end up having a move that uh, pushes it to close below this trend line, then we're going to see some continuation to the downside. While if today sparks uh, another move to the upside, I think that it has coiled uh, for a decent amount of time already. So uh, that would, if, if we find support here and we rebound, that would tilt the chances again for 
uh, one more push higher uh, before lower. And ma that might also coincide with the possibility of seeing some kind of a relief rally that's going to last for a few days and then get at some point at the start of the new year um, a sell-off. Now, um, other currencies that are at very critical junctures are obviously the cable. And why is that? Let me go basically for the cable, let me go down to a four hour chart. As you see, the cable from a technical perspective is quite clean at the moment. Why? Because we had a symmetrical triangle that was playing out for you know quite a long time. We finally broke below it. We came back in, so, so far this looks like a very corrective move. Um, it looks like a pennant so far. And we are retesting the previous support areas resistance. So if I only had one chart in front of me, and that was the cable, it would look great uh, for the cable uh, if we had some dollar strength coming in today, because from a technical perspective, a break below here would play out very nicely. What I'm trying to say here is I'm not trying to reverse the game. I'm not trying to predict what the dollar is going to do and hence what the Fed is going to say based on a single currency. But what I'm, you know, what the, my point being here is the following. If we get the Fed that sparks for one, one reason or the other some dollar strength in the market, I think that one of the best places to be is probably being short the cable because cable broke below an important area. It came back, it retested it. The move uh, higher so far looks corrective. So the market still looks weak for the cable. So I think if we get some dollar strength, the cable is probably going to be one of the best that's going to sell off uh, more the, than others. Now, the euro, on the other hand, is positioned at the exact opposite um, spot. I mean, it's also um, uh, at, at, an, at an important trend line, but this is actually an important trend line resistance. We're approaching this uh, symmetrical triangles resistance. And uh, so that means that if we get um, dollar strength from uh, the Fed, uh, there is going to be some distance for the euro to cover before it can go down to a critical level once again, which is a little bit below 113, uh, which is, you know, uh, horizontal support area and this uh, trend line support uh, before actually we can be talking about a break. So the euro USD, if we do get dollar strength, is not going to break immediately. The cable will. But oppositely now, if we get a dollar sell off due to the Fed's decision, I think that the euro is going to be the first one that's going to start breaking levels here uh, from uh, from the um, uh, low yielding uh, currencies. I mean, right, uh, because we're going to have a look at the commodity currencies later on. So uh, basically, the euro is going to immediately more or less break this if we if we get dollar weakness, this trend line resistance. Just above it, we have the confluence of this horizontal resistance area and the 38.2 of the last move lower at 114.50. And I do believe that if 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 uh, the euro closes above 114.50, there is going to be follow through in the days to follow, right? So uh, I do think that that's uh, that's going to finally produce a continuation one way or another. And I think, as I said, that if we get uh, dollar weakness, euro is better positioned. If we get dollar strength. Cable is better positioned, so you can benefit from that. Now, I know that a lot of people lately have been monitoring the USD CAD simply because, you know, it has been moving higher. That's not a surprise. For those of you that have been following the webinar, you know that I was looking at this trend line. And once we broke above it, I said that 133 is the next level to go. And above 133, why not? We can make it even all the way up to 136. The reason I didn't buy it and I still, do, I still don't like to buy it is because I do see why it can move higher. Technically, it was looking good to move higher. But if I zoom out and have a look at this whole move, this looks that this this move doesn't look impulsive to me. So it, it, it's slow, it's choppy, it's overlapping. So I think that it can fail at any given moment. Keep in mind that we're currently testing once again this um, ascending uh, channel of resistance a little bit higher. We have multiple resistances confluencing roughly at 135.50 to 136. So I would be quite careful if we make it up there or if we spike up there. The same deal with USD NOC. And now I'm going to go to oil to show you. USD NOC is currently testing the 870 area. Don't forget that we've had a major breakout from here, but we're now approaching another confluence of resistances, the 161.8 of this move lower and this ascending channel of resistance. So I wouldn't be surprised 
both of them are also well positioned if we get dollar strength uh, and risk off both of those currencies might sell off now um steve does drink is- decaf everybody <laughs> oh out of a cop out of a copper cup uh, and that reminds me what a great call for the breakdown of that little triangle in copper oh uh, yeah and, 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 and i actually sold some uh just before the webinar started if i remember right and they also I was just it. getting worried you weren't breathing uh, in uh, between and, uh, words, so uh, I, I wanted you uh, to get some oxygen. All right. And I, and I also and I also <laughs> bought yesterday at 45. For those of you that are in the chat room, you know it. I bought yesterday at 45.95. Uh, I bought one quarter of a position crude. Why did they do that? Simply because between 45.50 and 46, we have triple confluence of supports. You can only see two of them here the 88.6 and the 61.8 but if we go down to a four hour chart you can also see that this is also at 46.20 we also have the 161.8 percent extension of the triangles yes of the triangles um that's uh, why you want a third yeah a a fourth actually a quarter and they have and they and they have a position to buy another quarter exactly at the 61.8 uh, which is at 45.50, let's call it uh, roughly it's 45.49, but whatever, let's call it 45.50. Um, so um, I do think that crude should be bottoming sooner uh, rather than later. Of course, this is a completely counter trend trend uh, uh, trade. So you know, if if you're doing something like that, you need to have a very tight risk reward ratio, and you need to risk only what you're willing to lose, right? And don't go balls deep as they say sorry for my expression right because this is not going with the trend but i do believe that uh now that we've seen that last last lower uh, and by the way the dsi in crude hit six today six with a minimum of zero that's an extremely oversold level so i like how it looks and since you mentioned copper coach let's have a look at copper uh copper broke down yesterday it rebounded today. Actually, I more or less uh, sold the high of the day almost. I sold 268.5, um, one quarter of a position also, just because it's it, it's the head of the Fed. If it wasn't the head of the Fed, I would have actually gone in at least uh, half uh, a position size. Uh, but, you know, um, I think that we had a very bearish candle yesterday, decisively breaking and closing below this uh, very well established trend line. As you see, the market has already tested four times this trend line. So it's definitely um, uh, a reliable uh, trend line. So now that we had a rebound today, I found the opportunity of selling a quarter of a position. As I said, I would have sold more if it wasn't ahead of the Fed, but I don't want to have you know so much exposure based on you know what the Fed is going to say or the Fed is going to do. Um, now, uh, let me see if we have any questions. Uh, Costa, I just saw your question, but I already covered it, right? Yeah, Carnage yesterday, which is actually cool. I mean, which is actually cool, mate. Um, because uh, <laughs> yesterday, yeah, that, that comment, yeah. Um, so um, let me see if I have, uh, by the way, Ozzy has already uh, broken down from this um, ascending channel currently holding a very critical confluence of supports. So I would be very careful here. If we do see um, dollar strength and we break below here, I think we're headed to new lows. But if we do see dollar weakness, uh, this is a good area that we might rebound from. The price action though, uh, says that the Aussie is ready to make the next move to the downside if the Fed doesn't prevent it from. So Aussie wants to do the, the move lower if the Fed doesn't really spark some big dollar weakness, I think that's going to happen. Kiwi had a very nice rebound, but still now retesting uh, horizontal support resistance area once again. So uh, if we do uh, dollar strength, that's going to be a perfect level for a rejection and another move lower towards 67. I think that Kiwi also well positioned um for uh, dollar strength if that comes now if it doesn't personally i wouldn't be buying kiwi here let me let me make it clear okay um so if we don't have any questions i think 
Can you show us the knock chart, please? Thank you. Yeah, I did show it. I'm going to show it to you once again, and then uh, let's see if here it is, mate. USD knock, as you see, um, currently testing confluence of resistances and more resistance, just a little bit higher. But on the other hand, keep that in mind. We've broken above a very critical, um, a very long-term uh, formation, but that doesn't mean that we can't come down, retest, pull back, and retest this broken um, uh, channel as support before we move higher. That's what actually, that's exactly the price action I drew several days ago when we were down here. That perhaps we're going to move uh, higher, then come down, retest this trend line, and then resume to the upside. So far, we've had the the leg higher let's see if we're actually going to get the leg lower it's not that i'm a magician or something you know sometimes what i you know what i envision happens in the markets sometimes it doesn't what is important though is that i know which areas of the market are probable to produce re a reaction so at least you know i can define my risk reward whenever that is needed okay because that's you know that's oh uh, i have a question about euro knock and actually Thank you for reminding me because Euronoc was an interesting pair. I was monitoring it, but I completely forgot to mention it because Euronoc had a great, uh, had a consolidation, had a, this is actually, let's, let's take it one, one step at a time. First of all, Euronoc has been steadily climbing following this trend line support. So this, uh, this low here, was a tradable low because there was a very nice risk reward ratio and as you see we had quite an impulsive move higher we had a move lower that was clearly corrective and now we have another impulsive move higher so let me make it very clear i think it still, it still looks bullish okay so from what i'm seeing here it still looks bullish i mean we, we are obviously now facing some resistance as you see the previous high etc i'm not saying that I'm, i would be buying it up here um but you know any pullback probably uh, is going to find buyers once again, right? So that's what I think about Euronoc. Uh, and perhaps that could also coincide with a nice uh, rebound in crude, right? And then another leg of weakness, because one thing is for sure, um, no matter what kind of a rebound we get from crude, which sooner rather than later we're going to get a rebound from crude, given the kind of a move we've seen to the downside, I expect that that rebound is going to be corrective, right? Of course, after a 41% move lower, a corrective rebound can easily end up being $10, $12, right? So there is going to be a decent upside to be made if and when we confirm that actually crude is, uh, uh, has uh, begun um, a rebound, right? Not a consolidation because uh, the previous uh, call that we made that you know that was an area that crude was would stall was perfect having to do with the area but once crude proved that it doesn't have the strength to rebound higher and it showed us that this is actually a triangle that's when i knew that the market is not ready for the rebound yet that was purely another consolidation and you know that's why you need to redefine your uh, targets your um uh, your risk you know every day i mean you shouldn't you should you should be flexible in essence right because initially when we stalled there i really expected that we would rebound at least to 55 and we almost made it um but then the market proved that something else is is happening there and when you see that something else is happening you know you need to uh you know you need to readjust what what, what you're doing um andre sorry this took longer mate so um it would be great if we had you tomorrow um post fed but we had you know several questions so I don't know if you can make it tomorrow, but it would be great if we can have you uh, tomorrow to show us what you think about harmonics. I bet you're going to have more things to talk about, you know, after today's move. Okay, thank you, Andre. Um, gold, silver, and Fed news. We already analyzed all that, and it's interview time. You can you can watch uh, the uh, recording. We're going to post it uh, as soon as it's edited and ready. Um, and for all of you, as you know, as always, we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be covering in the chat, of course, the Fed decision, and uh, we're going to be sending updates, alerts, and patterns in play because, you know, we finally want to get some more exposure in the market. But, of course, we have to first see what the Fed will pro pro provide. So, uh, Coach, is your, in, uh, is your guest here? 
Uh, yes, uh, I'm not sure of Michael's last name. Michael, maybe you could uh, ask me a question so I know which one to make presenter. Also, Steve, I want to say prior to the interview, um, you know, that I've heard a lot of people talk about the markets for, uh, you know, about a century or so. And uh, nobody does a better job at covering the whole board and putting together the correlations and jigsaw puzzle than you in a half an hour. Uh, you know, the, the half an hour of your review, uh, if someone comes in with no idea what's going on, they end up with plenty of ideas. And you know what? It's not just your analysis. You're a very good trader. If you don't mind, let me ask you, how much Thank are you, you up this year? How much are you up this year? Uh, a little bit above 30%, but two-thirds of that was during the first three months of the year. So, okay. you know, I, I the, the first two and a half months of the year made my year in essence. I had okay. an amazing, I, I, probably I had the best, uh, I had like the best start of the year I ever had. Yeah, I know you were, you had some windfalls on some bear moves yeah, in the, in the S&P. Exactly, exactly. I remember exactly. you, because you, you were even excited. So, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. so, you know, pro, even professionals, we all say, oh, you know, it's just another trade. It's just so another if, trade. If I exclude the first two months of the year, I've done subpar uh, the rest of the year. It has been a tough year to trade, but I was lucky because I had, as you said, I had some huge windfalls during the, the first two years. Two that's all it takes. That all, that's all it takes. So thank you so much, Steve. So it's not just talk. Uh, everything he talks about, he does. And, uh, you know, normally uh, people charge a lot of money for that. So uh, join us, become part of our trading family. Uh, Blake probably wouldn't have answered that question. So, Michael, I'm guessing your last name starts with a G, because I've seen the other Michael in here quite a bit. So, looking forward to meeting you. And what great timing! Uh, I didn't know a few months ago, Michael, that you know we would be coming off the lows um, fairly explosively in the crypto world. So, I made you the presenter. There's a drop down menu. Michael Gold Goldtieri, I made the presenter. Are you here, Michael? Ask a question in the question box if you're here. Yeah, Andre, it does look like a possibility. If you could ask a question, let me know you're here. Let me check Twitter. I see nothing from him. Okay. I think we've been ghosted. Is that what it's called, guys? You know, the relationships that you have on the internet? <laughs> no worries. Uh, it's a good uh, it, is that what it's called, ghosted? You know, like, have you ever known someone for a couple years or so on the internet and then they just disappear? Give me a while if you've experienced that. Hey, hey, Andre. Hi, Andre. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry, Steve. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm here. Uh, you have you have sent me the um, the screen to change to the presenter. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Be because our guest yeah. is not here, so you can you ah, can show okay. us today what okay. you had to say. Yeah, we so, we got we got ghosted. Okay, no problem at all. You know, but they turned trying. into a ghost. They were so they that, were, were a, a real so Twitter that, person. That that okay. gives us that gives us a great opportunity for you to yeah. show us ahead of the Fed. Uh, yeah. I know that I know that Let's nobody put can put pressure on him, man. Yeah, no, no, no. I know uh, I know that nobody can predict what's going to happen. No, but sure. uh, what you can do is what you can try to do, and I know you're going to do it successfully. Is show us uh, mm -hmm. if we get dollar strength, what is what are the best setups out there that would be ready to play out, and if we get dollar weakness, what would be your favorite setup there to play out? So 
you know, choose at least one for each scenario and tell us uh, what what would be your best play in, in each of the cases. Hmm. Steve? Yeah, mate, yeah. we're here. Okay. We're here. We can I, I, lost, I lost you for a few seconds. Can you repeat the, the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I said I said give us if you want give us at least mm -hmm. one setup for each of the scenarios. If we get dollar strength or dollar weakness following the Fed, what do you mm -hmm. think is best positioned to benefit from one scenario, and what do you think is best positioned to benefit from the other scenario? Well, I will follow the, your 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 home. Um, let's say criteria. So I, I stay, I stay clue on pounds, uh, sell off and dollar and dollar if dollar starts to, to rise even more. So, ah, um, so we agree on the, that. That's, that's yeah, perfect. We agree on yeah. that. And dollar, dollar versus yen is already, I'm not sure if, if they will wait for, for those news um, because we have dollar versus yen already breaking uh, the structure below. So I'm not so it, sure. It's on the they, precipice. It's on the precipice. Yeah, it, it, I, eventually, we, we we will see that that breakout. I'm, I'm waiting for my chart there. Um, we will see that breakout uh, eventually before before those news. So, um, if that happens, uh, it can change a little bit the things because if if the dollar starts to to if dollar yen starts to fall before those news events, eventually they will find support at those few levels. We have also the 200 meter moving average. Approaching from below, this is a weekly time frame chart, and this is the weekly, uh, this is the daily time frame chart, and I will change into the weekly chart just to show you the the pattern that we are trading, um, and that I'm involved with. So <clears throat> let me just try to push these charts. I still believe, and, and actually, uh, Steve, I, I I believe there's there's, um, let's say. The Fed will, will obviously will force the, the price and it will help the price to, to achieve specific levels or to break specific structures. But the pattern is there already and there, there were a lot of news events during this process. Uh, as soon as the market completes the pattern, we have uh, weeks ahead and, and new, the, all those news events haven't changed, didn't change the, the, the pattern. So the pattern still still alive. And I do believe there's a huge probability to achieve those one and one ten seventy five. This is a, the thirty two percent retracement. And I'm not waiting for the news to trigger those those patterns or to achieve those levels. Obviously the the strength of or, or the power of those news will have impact inside the market and the only impact that I'm waiting to see um, on dollar versus yen specifically is to pressure to pressure down so to, to force the price to 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 achieve those levels of Fibonacci uh, a minimum of 38% retracement obviously we never know if that will happen but it's not the first time that those news events will will not trigger the pattern because the pattern is already printed or, or forged, but they will help that that pattern to achieve targets. Uh, obviously, not certain; it's not guaranteed, and, and we need we need to 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 remain um, uh, well. We need to accept that that as a possibility. So we, not, nothing is granted inside the market. The pattern is printed. I truly believe that this is the minimum expectation for dollar versus yen, and I truly believe that the, the news from tomorrow eventually will help that 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 to happen um yes. i i saw that you were also uh, looking at uh, crude down there right do, do yes, you have a I'm, pattern that has that has uh, it's it's it, i'm already positioned uh, i'm actually i i've uh, i'm not sure if you are if we are thinking on the uh, on our entry um steve because i i also try it's my second attempt to go long on on oil my first one I lost the trade, so I I, I I hit my stop loss. I, I also play these in, in these cases uh, where we have huge or a huge pressure down. Um, I don't assume a huge risk on uh, while trading on those situations. Um, and usually I measure my my minimum expectations for the pattern, the 38% retracement. It's also synced with the previous structure support with the small support previously printed. Um, I will target that level, and I use 
I use this level, I use these, the, the distance from my entry to the 38% retracement to measure my risk. So if I'm trading for 24% of, of eventually to, to rise on prices, um, I will not enter the market to lose another 24%. So I, I will not enter the market with a one-to-one -one risk reward approach. So I, I, I always try to minimize my losses. And obviously I can be hunted down um, and, and, and well, they, they, they can print a new low right below my, my stop loss and, and kick me out. But I prefer to create a few setups using, using a small, um, small risk, uh, specifically during the, this, this market. So a huge, a huge rally down and, and we expect at some point a bounce. Um, and that's what I'm expecting from here. So the market has printed this 224 shark pattern. Actually, the market has forced it as usually. Uh, as, soon as, as soon as the market uh, finds uh, a bottom or a support, um, the market prints, prints as an, uh, one last push below, I believe. One last push below. We are also oversold um, on oversold territory. So I, I will not be surprised and, and with strong divergence as, as we can see here i, I have this i use also, my... this is also a triangle uh, triangles are usually mm -hmm. uh, terminal formations yeah so break, break below the, and, and rise, rise above yes yeah. yes yes, yeah. yes so that's why i like the fact that we sold off hard after mm -hmm. breaking the triangle for a couple of days now mm -hmm. everybody's also bearish we are at confluence of multiple supports as i showed yeah. before so Personally, uh, I think we are we're getting there. We're getting very, very close to some big reversal. Well, I I, 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 I don't want to mis be misinterpreted though, right? That doesn't mean no, that no, it's, no, no, no. it's not no, no, yet no. a counter trend uh, attempt of a trade. First of all, and second of all, the mm. move lower is impulsive, so I would expect that a correction. A, a correction, yeah. Yeah, a correction, no matter how high it takes us, even if, if it goes mm -hmm. back to 67 that you're targeting. It should, would, it should be correct momentum. Yeah. Yes, would still produce more downside after it's mm -hmm. over, right? Uh, yes, I, I believe so. I believe so. That, yeah. that 200 moving average is starting to, to, to change the scope on a daily. It's very possible to retest, to search for a retest of this moving average. Yes, um, yes very and, nice. then, and then And then the pressure the pressure from that moving average should, should be felt and, and, and the market should, should, should start to fall again. If the market will break those lows, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's possible to retest the, the 200 moving average, to retest those lows and eventually to break below those lows. Uh, we never know about that, but that is the, 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 the probability. So that is what we, what we see inside the market based on previous history. We have people on Bloomberg and CNBC is telling we, we, will, we will see oil trading below the 30s so um, the next the ne starting the next year so i'm not so sure and i i don't know where where they found those 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 indicators telling them those those things but well they, they eventually they are better positioned than me uh, to talk about those 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 forecasts or to forecast the, the the prices to those levels but we have people saying that we have we will see oil trading below the 30s so at the end, at the, during yeah, the if economy. that happens, Andre, if that happens yeah. again, though, uh, oil is going to be once again in contango, as it was when yeah. we were trading down at twenty something, and um, a, a lot, a lot of supply is going to just uh, leave the market. So, mm -hmm. personally, if we get another, right, I had a monthly like... chart that showed it uh, that we could tag it down there, thirty-ish or something before this <laughs> completes. Which actually, what it's probably what you were going to say, Steve. Uh, it's kind of a bullish formation from down there. So, uh, course, yeah, we've explained uh, that before. How how the distribution of commodities is mm -hmm. right. I mean, it's not a normal distribution. It's a skewed distribution to the right hand side, but. It abruptly stops at some point on the left. Why? Because any commodity has a specific yeah. cost of producing, right? Right. right. So, given given the opportunity to buy oil at thirty dollars, in yeah. my opinion, and I should not, I, I should never be saying that because it's against the basic rule. But in quotes, is is a trade that can't really go wrong if if you have the capacity to hold and wait. I'm not saying that yeah. it can go lower than that. You understand what I mean? But I mean that crude cannot stay below 30 
for a long period of time. Long end of period story. Of time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. End of story. So oh, you know, yeah, there'll be I... bankruptcies from, uh, on the uh, among the frackers here in the U.S. You know, we're bragging that we are, uh, you know, now producing more than we take in. Uh, that would change. Yeah, but but nobody in the U.S. produces at at that, that, that price, as you. That's know, what I'm well saying. They'd be gone. Yeah. They'd yeah. be gone. Now, they're them. they're under break even now. Yeah. So. The uh, could, uh, yeah. We are crossing limits at this point in, in, in a various... Yeah. Uh, so personally, I, 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 I will, personally, if we get at those prices, I will be gladly scaling in uh, in crude oil and will be feeling quite comfortable even being you know, decently out of the money because yeah. uh, it's a position... First of all, if we get down there, probably we're going to have, as I said, contango once again, which means that it's going to be paying you to own crude. Oh, That's the fun yeah. part. You, yeah, you're, you're even going to have... <laughs> Uh, you're you're even going to have a carry trade going for you, right? So you're going to have a yeah. positive carry. So, yeah, but I think Andre and you yeah. guys are right. We get that rally first, you know, and uh, oh yeah, and yeah, then, you know, yeah. And, and you'll probably find measured moves that'll take it down there if this is just oh yes, a the, the, market, so, the market should 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 guide us through through the, those process. No doubt, the market should yes. should. I, I use a. a a funny expression the market the market should whisper you where where it goes next so but you are it, such it, a romantic guy i mean <laughs> you know I, you know you, you draw all these uh, you know your harmonics are artwork and you the market whispers to andre uh, now you know why don't you it just was... serenade your harmonic chart tonight <laughs> <laughs> no but... But it's true. The market will will show you the directions. You, the market. You know what the problem. The you know what the problem is, coach. Right? Is that what? he sets he he sets the table with the expensive. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he, then, then he puts on. Yeah, yeah, he lights up the candles. He puts on the flower, and then he burns up the food and the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff together and at the end, uh, it's it's the same as as printing those charts, Dale, and the the the, the trade misses, so the trade fails. Oh, those oh, what a magnific bad pattern we have with the best risk strategy. All the Fibonacci criteria are there. The pattern is valid, but if it, it, it fails at, at the end, so we have all the candles, the the, the table, and the dishes, and, and and but the meal is not is not ready. Did to, you to guys eat. did you guys listen to the guy I interviewed yesterday, his story? Uh, oh, no, yeah. I, 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 I I did. It was uh, quite impressive, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and uh, he said that the market's purpose is to convince you it's something that it's not. Yeah, for sure. And I, I believe, and in, in taking your words, uh, they'll everyone when possibly in, in almost for sure those who are learning process and starting to trade, um, they always tend to search for something inside those charts. So they, they start to make an analysis, and and they they need something for today, for now. So they they assume right. the market is printing something now for for their to trade, for right. them to trade. And it's it's not eventually that's not the case. Um, we need to be able to to sit above above our hands and to watch the market and to 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 understand how the market behaves. And it will take time. I used to say to people, you need a strategy to trade. You need you need a risk strategy. You need a decent technical approach to to to, to study and to learn your your chart or to study your charts and to create your setup, to create a motive to trade your 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 charts. But um, it takes it takes a lot of time to 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 get synced with the market. It takes a long a lot of time to 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 sync your personality with the technical approach that you are using to trade the market and to create your motives to trade. It's not it's not an easy task to um, to develop those skills. So and we have a lot of different skills inside the market that you need to develop and, and to to improve. And it it will take and for those who are learning specifically for those who are learning process, it will take. A lot, a lot, a lot of time. It will, it will not happen in one month, in two months, in six months, in one year. It will not take. It will most, take you. Most guys to... say four, and the oh, guy even, yesterday even, said even forever. forever. Yeah, even yeah. It, it, for me it's forever. And let me yeah. let me be honest with you. As soon as I, I started to work with forex analytics, my my trades 
uh, my performance starts starts to increase. And why? Because I'm I'm, I'm surrounded with some of the best traders that I that I know at this point, um, and that will that helps me to to develop my and to to improve my my own behavior yep. inside the market. Obviously, we have all specific criteria to improve. So my and, and let me be honest with you, my entries suck. So I need to improve my entries. I need to 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 be capable to to look back into previous history and and to define. Um, specific criteria to improve that entry, that those entry levels. So if somehow I'm trading a four hour time frame, I go down in a, in a 15 minute time frame chart on a five minute time frame, frame, time frame chart to entry in my trades. And sometimes, and, and let's say most of the times, as soon as I enter the market, the market pulls back in, uh, against me a, yeah, a few points. Yeah. yeah. But eventually the, the market ends up at my targets, but my entries needs to be improved because people can't enter the markets and start losing a lot of money I immediately. I need you to know what, Andre, those. that's a very teachable moment, you know, as we come to the end of the year. You know, yeah. a lot of people make New Year's resolutions, you know, things yeah. that they and want to improve the, on. This is the time to do that. This is the time yeah, to do and so you, you, uh, you've identified a weakness that you're, you're you know, oh, you're, yes. you're resolved sure. to get better at. It's, I my learning. It's, it's, mine, it's a constant process. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is, uh, you know, my entries are we're opposite. You know, my entries are great. Riding mm -hmm. to target, it's tougher for me. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think everyone listening to our voice right now has to evaluate their strengths and weaknesses going into the end of the year, yeah. and uh, pick at least one. You know, entry, exit, and, risk. And, and, uh, yeah. Focus on it. Uh, and that will make a world of a difference. If I would yeah. would stay longer with my trades, my performance would, you know, uh, you know, I'm up about 30% in yeah. ETFs yeah. on a small account, but, you know, it could have been a lot better yeah. if I had sat yeah. and had the patience. And, 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 and I believe all of we, we all can say the same things, Dale. Um, Blake is not here for sure, but for sure he is. Yes, uh, some 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 points to to improve. Uh, I believe yeah, that, everyone. That is a, but obviously, we are, I'm, I'm I'm pushing the example of one of the top ten traders in the world. But they also fail. They fail the, the, yes. the, those trades. Those, the, they they have the capability to make you great analysis. They they are almost uh, perfect in terms of analysis. But the trades the trades also fail, and something needs to be improved sometimes. And uh, as Blake has mentioned before. Blake likes to project the prices, but he's not capable to hold their trades to the to the targets that he. Oh, he's like me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. It's, so. it's, it's, it's a very difficult task to hold those positions for long yeah. term. I've long said it's easier time. to make yeah. a great call, a great oh, trade. Yeah. The yeah. toughest part is having a great hold. Yeah, and let let me remember some 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 words from from George. Um, I believe it's Ronnie. The captain from, oh, yes. from, from our chat room, he, he said one thing that that um, I keep forever um, because I thought uh, I, I was thinking in in the other side, at the other side, uh, I, I was positioned at the other side of this of this idea. Um, captain said one one day when 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 you make the, the interview with 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 him, um, he told that. Uh, uh, someone asked asked them how how did you become rich or a, a millionaire, uh, and it, he answered that jumping out too early from from their trades, uh, and and this this is a contradiction because we 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 try to hold and to maximize our profits, achieving our targets. Okay, I have a 38% retracement as my first target. I will I will hold that position until there, um, but most of the times we end up jumping out from our trades before reaching our targets um, yeah. and Ronnie Cap the captain has, has said one 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 thing that is very very interesting that someone has become millionaire jumping out from their their, their trades uh, too earlier and um, well and that let me let, put me think in in into those all, all those processes so, okay I identify I spend one hour Studying these charts, okay. Then I, st I start 
I, I started top-down analysis and I decided to, I have, a, I have my motive to trade, I have my targets, I have my stop loss, I have my risk strategy calculated, my margins uh, already um, defined before I entered my trade. So before I entered my trade, I already know my price to entry, my price to exit, and my price for stop losses. Then I entered my trade. And what will change what will change in my initial idea once, I, when, once I, I'm inside this trade? So why to jump out from this trade if I spend one hour making an analysis and, and searching for a motive to trade or eventually I wait for one entire week to, for this motive to trade this motive or to trade this setup? And once, I, once I'm inside that trade, as soon as the market prints me 20 pips above my entry, I jump out before reaching my targets. You know, and that's a great point. You, you you talk about it. Maybe that's what aggravates people that get mm -hmm. out early is they put in all the time and energy, it, which it takes yeah. to do good analysis, plus, you know, sitting there waiting for the setup, waiting for confirmations, and then you do it. And then for all that mental labor that you exactly. go through, you're not being rewarded for it. Uh, you know, because you are just, not capable to wait for your for your yeah. initial initial targets. Why? Right. Because yeah. the pattern is there. Why? Why? What makes you change your initial criteria? The the pattern is still there. The bad pattern is printed at 88% retracement. As soon as the market violates this level above, let's imagine we are shorting a bearish bad pattern, and we wait for one entire week to achieve that level. The market finally achieves that level, and we short the market. We have the decent, the decent risk reward approach to trade that the specific market, and we enter the market. What will yeah. invalidate the pattern? Trading above the 88% retracement, because if you are shorting from the 88% retracement, we wait for the invalidation of that pattern above that level. So right. as soon as the market starts to trade above that level, it will threat your, your stop losses. Uh, until there, you, you need to, to remain positive until the market achieves those levels because we have historical data that says, okay, the bad pattern usually with a huge probability and we are talking about 70% of probabilities to achieve the targets. So we need to remain with those probabilities. We start with 70% uh, probabilities to achieve targets and we remain with those probabilities once we are instilled, we, we're still inside this trade. So we, we have to, first of all, we need a technical approach to trade. So we need a technical analysis. If, if I trade harmonic patterns, I already know where those patterns will invalidate. If you are trading support and resistance levels, you already know where, those, where your entries or your, where your trades will be invalidated. If you are trading an edge in shoulder formation, if you short the right shoulder, if you short the neck, you already know if the market violates the head, will threat your stops. No, if you're right. trading... Uh, any type of strategy, if you are trading a, a flag or a triangle, if you, if you are shorting a triangle, you need to position your stops above that triangle. If the price starts to trade above the triangle, it will trade your stops. So, so bottom, you line, to, uh, bottom line, but, Andre, you hey, have to know. Yeah. You have to know the technicals and you need to remain positive until the market proves to yourself that is no longer valid, that, that strategy. That, that yeah. Not the strategy, that Three pattern things. that you are trading. Yeah. Three things to set up the trade. Know why yeah. you're getting into the trade, what's the contingency. Mm -hmm. You know where you're wrong on the trade if that contingency yeah. is negated. And what are you looking for if you're right? And if you exactly. can't answer those three questions, Stay Stay don't, click don't click your yeah. mouse. Don't don't yeah. yeah. You know what? You mentored me today. And uh, you know, I <laughs> no, never I, I never I, I've no, learned a lot did. from you, Dale. I've learned I've learned, uh, I've learned, you know, learned but, a lot. Well, you know what? I, I was wondering what really bothered me about, you know, and I knew it just wasn't, you know, the money of missing windfalls mm -hmm. and seeing things achieve my targets. Yeah. It's a labor. Uh, you know, a lot of people think you're not working. You're just mm -hmm. staring at a computer screen. But, yeah. you know, it does take a lot of uh, energy, mental energy to, yeah. um, you know, put the jigsaw together like Steve does together. every day yeah. and everything. Yeah, it takes yeah. hours. And so uh, you're not being paid for your labor. You're selling yourself short by yeah. doing that. And uh, I want, I'm going to do that a whole lot less next year, Andre. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know what? I didn't, ha I didn't really wasn't able to put my finger on it. But mm -hmm. uh, you helped me today by saying, you know what? 
you're you're sh you're you're shorting yourself by you put in all this work for what you know just uh, you know. 30, you 50 pips, pips uh, yeah. Pips. yeah. It's what? money, it's money, Dale. And, and as, as Captain has said, how did you become a millionaire jumping out too early from the trades? So imagine, yeah. imagine if you if yeah. you are capable to hold those trades. <laughs> yeah, that's a great you know, image. That's imagine. a great image. Uh, imagine yourself not clicking your mouse or yeah. even on a limit yeah. order taking profits at your target. And, and, and let me, let me add just, 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 just one more element to that, uh, Dale, because all those emotional behaviors inside the market, so jumping out too early, um, shorting, a, shorting a bottom or buying a top or, 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 or let's say shorting a false breakout that, that you expected to, to the market to break and the market uh, uh, as end up uh, not breaking the structure and you are inside the trade, so uh, or jumping too early or entering too early in, inside your trades. So we have a lot of mistakes inside. We committed a lot of okay. mistakes. Okay, you know what People I think, think also, hmm. Andre, besides just you know the knowledge and creating hmm. a new paradigm, I want to share this with everyone. And it happens to every trader. Mm -hmm. We're not in a peak performing state every day, okay? Oh, no. You might sure. not feel good one day. There might be a crisis in your family. Um, mm -hmm. you, you may have been traveling uh, and have jet lag and, got, and, got, and, yeah. and, got no, and didn't get any sleep. Huh? Everything that's around us in terms of social behaviors and, and our yeah. families, our friends, will we'll have some impact in, in your capabilities to analyze the market and to create your, your decent uh, trade setups. Yeah. So obviously, if you are frustrated with something uh, because you burned your kitchen, you can trade the markets. I, I've, right. I've, 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 my kitchen completely painted in, in black by the smoke. How can I sit in front of my computer to trade the markets? If my wife is in the hospital, how can I sit in front of the markets Trading, trading. How or can you even or, think about the markets? How can you even think about the markets? It's, it's completely impossible. So, the mind state to trade the market is very important. And one, one of the, the things that I discovered after a few years fighting and, and, and trying to survive inside the markets is that I need some criteria, I need some rules that allows me to feel comfortable with those setups. So, one of those criteria is, is, is that, that I mentioned before. So. Uh, define your stop losses, define your targets, and wait. Wait and wait patiently. Say, search for other, other things. Read the book instead of sitting in front of the market while you, you are waiting for your targets. You don't need to, 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 to remain in front of your computer uh, checking tick by tick if the market goes in the other direction. Oh, if the market starts to go in my, against me, oh my God, I need to stop this trade right now. <laughs> and, and don't do that. One one of the things that I learned. Oh yeah, you'll make yourself sick, you know. Uh, oh, completely, you know. my friend. Completely. Yeah. Jump inside your trades. Stay stay calm and and, 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 and well and let that yeah. let the trade breath breathe and, and and don't don't worry about that. That because if you start to think a lot of on, on tick by tick, <laughs> you you'll end up a, a lot of stress. Uh, in yeah, you'll end up on uh, antidepressants and lithium. Tired, tired, super you know. tired. At the end of the day, and you eventually the next day you will not be capable to 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 be cold enough to to and refresh it, to to look into the market and to and to search for another another trade opportunity, and, and well, it's it's discipline uh, criteria, rules, and and respect those rules. And, and I believe there's a book uh, as you mentioned before, trading in the zone. It will help a lot of those who are learning the process. Um, to not not to think the market as 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 a, a coin through. So I I don't throw I don't throw my, my I, I'm not playing in the casino. So I'm playing I'm, I'm trading the market. So I, I'm searching for specific and very specific criteria inside the market. In, in this case, I use harmonics and the, the Fibonacci ratios to search for those specific criteria. And if the market uh, is is showing you that that those criteria, you just need the risk strategy to trade them. And all right, let's. There are, there are all two right, different things. Yeah. Yeah, though, I tell you what, uh, people really liked our uh, back and forth. They're commenting on it. You know, uh, for people that have that problem of having to watch every tick, mm -hmm. I have a solution. And I'm going to end this face webinar with yeah. an oath. I want everyone to take, raise your right hand, everyone.
Raise your right hand. <laughs> okay, everyone's hand up. Give me a why if your hand's up. Close my eyes. Close I, your okay, eyes. okay. <laughs> I will, after I initiate a position, I will manage it from a higher time frame. Mm -hmm. I promise. This is my oath for 20 Nice advice. Minutes. Nice advice. Okay. And nice that'll advice. take some of the pressure off you because you won't see every wiggle. And I'm going to do it too. And uh, you know what? I'm like uh, Santa Pinkard. I, uh, <laughs> I know when you're <laughs> naughty and I know when you're nice. So manage mm -hmm. it from a higher time frame or we might have to feed you mice. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, uh, everyone have a great day into the Fed. All right, good hunting and, you know, uh, good luck on your reaction. But uh, really, this is a great teaching tool. Um, uh, I, would re I would save this uh, webinar and think about all the great things that Andre said that can help <laughs> you to be a better trader next year because um, he helped me today. And uh, everyone, I, I, you know, wish you good hunting. Remember, don't, yeah, Andre, thank you. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Uh, have a nice guest for tomorrow. Anka, I think it's trade out loud. So uh, that should be interesting. And I'll see everyone when we see the dust settle tomorrow morning. So adios, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. Andre, my trading warrior brother. Steve, if you're listening. The whole team, the best team on the net that I've ever worked with. Okay. I know Goldman Sachs never hired me. But this is better than anything at Goldman Sachs. I'm yeah, telling you. These break, are all people. Yeah, break you know what? We're, better than, yeah, than we, Goldman Sachs and, and Yeah, Marvel. we learn. <laughs> We learned the hard way, okay? Yeah, you know, we, we, we you know, we didn't go to Princeton. We, you know, we didn't go to Harvard, and you know, we were all set up when we were 22 years old. Yeah. Blake used to sell clothes. All right, it was a, a marine, a clothes salesman, taught himself how to trade, paid the dues, like every one of you. And you know, all of us here, whether you're a subscriber or not, we're rooting for you. So everyone, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, Andre. Good Take luck. Days, everyone. Good luck. All right. You. All right. See everyone tomorrow. Good hunting. Adios.